Today's episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. So here you are choosing to watch an educational video on YouTube. I'm going to make the barely safe bet that you rather like learning things. And if I'm right, I think you'll love the sponsor of today's episode, Curiosity Stream. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know we cover a lot of history. We cover battles and wars and stuff like that. And with that in mind, I would really recommend checking out Apocalypse World War One, which has over 300 hours of archival footage from World War One and traces the journeys of civilians and soldiers who fought for survival in one of the darkest his times in history. This is a deep dive from the war's outbreak in 1914 through the duration to the US intervention and the Treaty of Versailles. If you like the stuff we publish here, you'll love that show on Curiosity. Plus, you can watch Curiosity stream pretty much anywhere, grab a few minutes on your phone, or check it out on the big TV. Whatever you like. Also available worldwide so you can access their full library of content, no geo restrictions. And speaking of content you'll never run out, as in addition to thousands of programs already on the service, there are new shows added every week. So, go to curiositystream.com slash brainfood for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for you guys, you can use the promo code BRAINFOOD, which will get you 25% off, which comes out to only $14.99, not per month, but per year. That's just $1.25 per month. And now today's video. When discussing the potential greatest pirate of all time, there are no shortage of candidates. In name value, we have the likes of individuals like Blackbeard, who was the scourge of the Caribbean in the 18th century. However, when looking at his actual accomplishments as a pirate, they pale in comparison to some of the true leaders in this profession. Moving on from Blackbeard, a much more worthy candidate is the partial inspiration for the character of Dread Pirate Roberts, Welshman Bartholomew Roberts. During his reign of seafaring terror, Roberts and his crew captured an almost unheard of 400 Ships. But here, too, this was child's play compared to the clear greatest pirate of all time. Yes, among the pantheon of pernicious pirates, there is one who very clearly stands above the others in history. We are, of course, talking about Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who at 14 managed to pirate a cherished piece of papal music. Miserere may do that at the time was one of the most popular in the Christian world, but could only be heard a couple of times a year in the Vatican. Just joking, of course, or at least about being the greatest pirate part. He really did pirate that particular piece of music via watching two performances of it and then transcribing the 15 minute or so piece from memory later. Normally, the punishment for this act would supposedly have been excommunication. But in his case, instead, the Pope was impressed by the teenage composer's ability and initiative and instead awarded him the chivalric order of the Golden Spur, essentially a papal knighthood. But going back to seafaring pirates, there is in truth one very clear greatest of all. Someone who most of you are not familiar with, unless you're a particularly well-read piratical connoisseur or perhaps just listen to our old Brain Food Show podcast. What might also surprise you about this particular individual is that this pirate in question did not just stand head and shoulders above their pirate brethren, but also was of the female persuasion. While female pirates weren't uncommon off the coasts of Asia in the 18th or 19th centuries, one woman stood above them all. Her birth name isn't known, but this Cantonese pirate went by the name of Ching Shi, also Zheng Yi Sao, wife of Zheng, and Zhen Shi, widow of Zheng. For our purposes, we'll just refer to her as Ching Shi to avoid any confusion. Ching Shi was born sometime around 1775. The exact date isn't known. Little is known about her youth, but at the age of 26, she found herself working as a prostitute in a floating brothel in Canton. While there, she caught the eye of Zheng Yi, already a very successful pirate with a small fleet of ships at his command known as the Red Flag Fleet. Exactly how the two ended up together is disputed. Some historians hold that Zheng Yi sent a raid to plunder the brothel and asked his men to bring back his favorite prostitute, Ching Shi, for his portion of the loot, while others claim he simply went there himself and proposed that they wed, which she only agreed to after he consented to give her equal share of his plunder and to allow her to help run the organization. Whatever the case, once married, Ching Shi did indeed begin helping Zheng Yi run the Red Flag Fleet. During the next six years, their fleet grew initially from about 200 ships to 600 with some key alliances, including forming the Cantonese Pirate Coalition with Pirate Wu Xie, and then to an astounding 1700 to 1800 craft by 1807, as more and more pirates flocked to their banner. Unfortunately for Zheng Yi, on November 16, 1807, he found himself caught in a typhoon and he didn't manage to survive the ordeal. Rather than step aside, handing over the organization to someone else, Ching Shi convinced Zheng Yi's second-in-command, 21-year-old Chang Pao, to support her in taking over the Red Flag fleet. 
Chang Pao was the son of a fisherman that had actually been captured by Zheng Yi when Chang Pao was just 15. He was then forced into the life of a pirate. He quickly gained favor in the eyes of Zheng Yi due to his intelligence, bravery, and skill in a fight, and was adopted by the pirate captain and Ching Shi as a son and made second in command of the fleet. With Chang Pao leading their troops in raids and the like, Ching Shi focused on the business side of things, continuing to plan military strategy and also to govern and grow the organization into something that went beyond just partnered pillaging pirates. At the Red Flag Fleet's peak in 1810, she commanded about 1,800 ships, both big and small, 70 to 80,000 pirates, about 17,000 male pirates directly under her control, the rest being other pirate groups who agreed to work with her group, and then female pirates, children, spies, farmers, enlisted to supply food, etc. She controlled nearly the entire Guangdong province directly, held a vast spy network within the Qing Dynasty, and dominated the South China Sea. She didn't just rely on looting, blackmailing, and extortion to support her troops either. She set up an ad government to support her pirates, including establishing laws and taxes. Because she controlled pretty much the entire criminal element in the South China Sea, she was able to guarantee safe passage through it to any merchants who wanted to pay. Of course, if they didn't pay, they were fair game for her pirates. In order to manage her ruffians and get them all to do what she said without question, she also set up a strict system of law within the Red Flag Fleet, which basically equated to, you don't follow the rules, or I think you aren't, and you get your head chopped off no exceptions. Specific laws included, if you disobey an order, you get your head chopped off and your body thrown in the ocean. If you steal anything from the common plunder before it has been divvied up, you get your head chopped off and your body thrown in the ocean. If you rape anyone without permission from the leader of your squadron, you get your head chopped off and your body thrown in the ocean. If you have consensual sex with anyone while on duty and were a man, you get your head chopped off and your body thrown in the ocean, and the woman involved will get something heavy strapped to her and also tossed in the ocean. If you loot a town or ship of anything at all or otherwise harass them, when they have paid tribute, you get your head chopped off and your body thrown in the ocean. If you take shore leave without permission, you get your head chopped off and your body thrown in the ocean. If you try to leave the organization, you get your head chopped off and... Actually, no, in that case, you just get your ears chopped off. Who knew? Funnily enough, captured ugly women were to be set free unharmed. Captured pretty women could be divvied up or purchased by members of the fleet. However, if a pirate was awarded or purchased a pretty woman, he was then considered married to her and was expected to treat her accordingly. If he didn't, he got his head cut off and his body thrown in the ocean. She didn't just restrict herself to sea battles either. She used her numerous shallow-bottomed boats to good advantage along rivers to raid towns along the way, including defeating any armies that came against her. For instance, two towns once banded together together, raised an army, and sent it against her forces. The Red Flag Fleet won the battle, and she subsequently marched her army to the two towns and ransacked them, including beheading every male found there. She definitely had a thing for cutting people's heads off. Now, the pirate controlling a large portion of the Emperor's lands and subjects didn't sit well with him. As such, he raised a fleet of ships to attack Ching Shi's fleet. Unfortunately for him, Ching Shi was also a brilliant military strategist, and rather than just running from the Emperor's armada, she sailed out to meet it with her fleet, which defeated the armada quite easily. Not only this, but she managed to commandeer 63 of the large ships sent against her and convince most of the surviving crews to join her by letting them choose between being nailed to the deck by their feet and then beaten to death or becoming members of the Red Flag Fleet and celebrating the victory with the rest of the pirates. Needless to say, she found herself with plenty of replacements for the pirates that she'd lost in battle. As for the admiral of the fleet sent against her, Kuo Lang, he committed suicide before he could be captured. The attacks on her fleet didn't stop there. However, now, without a fleet large enough to her on alone, the Qing Dynasty government enlisted the aid of the superpower British and Portuguese navies, as well as many Dutch ships, paying them large sums of money to help take her out. These combined forces waged war on Qing Shi's organization for two years with little success. She and her fleet won battle after battle until the emperor decided to take a different tack. Instead of trying to defeat her, he offered her and most of her organization amnesty. Qing Shi initially rejected the terms of the amnesty treaty. However, in 1810, she unexpectedly showed up at the home of the governor general of Canton with the intention of working out a peace treaty. The deal that she struck was that the fleet would disband, including giving up most of their ships, and in return, they would nearly all be granted amnesty and allowed to keep any loot that they had acquired during their time as pirates. 
The exceptions were 376 of her crew, of which 126 were executed, and the other 250 received some punishment or other for their crimes. All the rest got off scot-free, and as part of the agreement, any who wanted it were allowed to join the military, including her second-in-command and now husband, Chang Pao. He was given command of 20 ships in the Qing Dynasty Navy. Qing Shi was also given money to distribute to her crew to help offset the cost of them switching from a life at sea to one on the mainland. As for Qing Shi herself, she negotiated the rights to keep the fortune she had accumulated and acquired a noble title, Lady by Imperial Decree, which entitled her to various legal protections as a member of the aristocracy. She then retired at the age of, get this, just 35 at this point, opening a gambling house slash brothel in Guangzhou in Canton, which she managed until her death at the age of 69. During this time, she also became a mother to at least one son and a grandmother. One can only imagine the bedtime stories that she told her son and grandchildren. So, not only was she unequivocally the most successful pirate of all time, but unlike the vast majority of other famous pirates in history, she also managed to escape being executed or punished in any way for her crimes and retired extremely wealthy and had risen from a lowly peasant birth to a member of the aristocracy and did it all in a time when both peasants and women in general had little prospect for improving their station in life in just about any way. The Dread Pirate Roberts had nothing on her. Bonus facts. Speaking of famous female pirates, another interesting case was Anne Bonny. Born to a family that eventually became quite wealthy, apparently enjoying the bad boys, she went against her father's wishes and married a poor sailor and pirate. Now, disowned by her family for this act, she moved to the Bahamas around 1715, where she became acquainted with various other pirates, in particular Captain John Calico Jack Rackham. From here, she became his mistress and left her husband for the full-time pirate life. Taking part in the fighting and looting, this red-headed beauty quickly gained the respect of a fellow pirate. Although we do wonder how, being a redhead in the age before sunscreen, she dealt with Caribbean sun at sea without prying herself to a crisp. In any event, in October of 1720, the ship she was on was attacked, with most of the crew drunk or asleep, leaving Bonnie, Mary Reed, another female pirate, and one other unknown pirate to try and fight off the invading troops. They failed, and supposedly Bonnie's last known words about her lover, Captain Rackham, were, if he had fought like a man, he did not have been hanged like a dog. Ouch. Although sentenced to die, Bonnie and the other female pirate, Reed, were initially spared as they were both pregnant at the time. They were, however, to be executed after they gave birth to their respective babies. Reed, however, died shortly thereafter in prison of some unknown sickness. Bonnie was never executed and seems to have lived to a ripe old age, dying around 1782. It isn't exactly known how she got off, but it is thought that her father intervened on her behalf. He is known to have done so before in other instances when she was arrested, using his connections with various merchants and businessmen in the Bahamas to secure her release. Evidence by her descendants suggests she, apparently realizing, as so many women eventually do, that the bad boys are to be avoided if one wants a happy and relatively drama-free life, then was returned to her father and was married off to Joseph Burley a year later, and subsequently had ten children by him, along with one by Captain Rack. She lived to the ripe old age of 80. Much like Ching Shi, we seriously bet she had the most fascinating bedtime stories to tell her children. And now, if you're wondering about Mary Reed, due to being born illegitimately, Reed's mother began dressing her as a boy nearly from birth to take the place of her dead, legitimate older brother because, well, why not, apparently? This allowed her mother to continue receiving the inheritance due to a dead son. Reed continued to dress as a boy until grown and found her way as a crewman aboard a ship. Not liking that, she switched and joined the British military, again still disguised as a man. She didn't begin dressing as a woman until she married a Flemish soldier and took up residence running the three trade horses in in the Netherlands. Unfortunately for Reed, given how the rest of her life turned out, her now comfortable life was interrupted by the death of her husband, at which point she began impersonating a man again, once again joining the military. After a while, she got tired of this and so traveled to the West Indies, at which point her ship was taken by pirates and she was coerced into joining their ranks. A few years later, in 1720, she joined the crew of Captain Rackham and Anne Bonny, though still with everyone thinking she was a man. She was discovered to be a woman by Bonny when Bonny started to fall for her and wanted to get busy. Once Bonnie found out she was a woman, the two became even closer, and Rackham became extremely jealous, still thinking Reed was a man. When Rackham tried to murder Reed, he too was let in on the fact that she was actually a lady. From there, she sometimes dressed as a woman and sometimes as a man, depending on the circumstance. The two went pirating together until they were captured, as previously described. Reed subsequently died in prison. As there is no record of a baby or a birth, it is, as alluded to, thought she died of some sickness before giving birth, or perhaps from complications during pregnancy. Or childbirth. <laughs>